in the local Miami neighborhood, an international story unfolds day by day. A story that by 2006 could culminate on a world stage as it reaches deep to the soul of a poor nation, touched by fate and events. Soit en Haïti ou à l'extérieur de notre pays, il aime le football. Car surtout pour la sélection nationale, quand il joue à l'extérieur, dans quel que soit le pays que nous passons, et le football, et, et nous avons et toujours rencontré avec des gens qui sont qui haïtiens, qui nous voient, qui viennent voir le match. Et, et lorsque vous allez en France, vous rencontrez des Haïtiens qui, nous, qui viennent nous supporter et dans le football. When Haiti, when Haiti soccer, everybody's the same. The national soccer team of Haiti, pushed by political upheaval on the island at the start of 2004, has gone into exile in an attempt to qualify for sport's greatest showcase, World Cup 2006 in Germany. Para ver si podemos lograr este este sueño, no que había pasado en 74, así que creo que estamos bien, tenemos todo, tenemos todas las condiciones para para poder lograr. As Haiti, which in the year 2004 celebrates its 200th anniversary as the first black republic, and its proud people look to recapture a sense of identity. The national soccer team, known as L'Ons National, has become a symbol of renewal for the country. But when Haiti went to the World Cup in 74, you could not literally tell, I mean, it was just a one unified country. If we could find that, we could keep that one day a year, I think we'd make progress. Elle est seule et chose et qui pour nous qui qui grande à nous sauver en Haïti c'est le football. Haiti is the Brazil of the Caribbean. There there there's no group more around the world that is more passionate about their soccer. If we can help to alleviate the pain of the people in Haiti, getting this kind of results and growing as a team and hopefully qualify for the World Cup, we're going to do whatever it takes. But more than anything else, I wanted, this is what I wanted to happen, not for Fernando Clavico, I wanted it to happen for the players. They deserve something good to happen to them. They deserve this. While representing their country, the poorest in the Western Hemisphere, as it tries to marshal its economic resources for its people, the players have pursued careers abroad, but come together for each of the World Cup matches. <laughs> Argentino! Escúchame, cuídense, eh. Nos vemos, eh. A todos, a todos. Ya me quedo tranquilo. Quédense tranquilo. Quédense tranquilo. Bueno, en el futuro. No hay fecha de futuro. Está en buena mano, ¿verdad o no? Sí, sí. Yo por eso yo tengo fe en eso. Bueno, mucha suerte y. La próxima vez te quiero ver con la camiseta de Uruguay. Te voy a regalar una de Uruguay. Firmada por mí, por Enzo Francesco. Dale. They also face another challenge. The longer they succeed, the longer the men must be away from home and their loved ones. Many living together as a family and traveling for months at a time. Ya hace como un año y que no voy allá. Yo estoy un poquito extrañando a mi familia, pero bueno. Players like Peter Germain keep tabs on events in Haiti with the television and cell phones as their umbilical cords to the country. Far from Haiti, perhaps, but not always free from worry. Germain's house was burned while he was in Miami playing a qualifying match. And he goes to me, well, the, the house was burned down. I was shocked. I didn't know. I said, please do not tell them. Yes, yes, yes. My son is here. I'm here. The moment I'm not with my parents, I'm telling them that everything Et Dieu merci, ils sont encore vivants et pour le moment je pense ce soir à la fête en Haïti, États-Unis, ce soir même près de Joël. Now a man without a house, Germain's hopes for Germany still burn bright in the team's Florida base. Don't play like this when you don't see, because they can stop it, can't stop. Okay, and talk, talk to everybody. Go, you go for Monet. To keep their dream alive and their minds on the prize, the players prefer to keep calm in Florida. Je te l'avais dit, on est beaucoup plus tranquille, beaucoup plus cool. C'est ici, on se rigole tous les jours, on se blague. Ça va, ça va. Il y a Ousvel Désir, l'un des plus anciens de l'équipe, il y en a un peu chez lui. Il y a aussi Kim Juice et Kim Belly. 
il y a ici dans Richardson. Ce sont les flous fous Oui, ce sont les fous. D'accord. C'est vrai But the relaxed atmosphere in the house belies a rising tension and responsibility for the players, coaches, and everybody involved. I want to make a game Sunday would be great if we can do it. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, that we do it. If you guys can come, it would be great because I have no games. Right. There's night light. Yeah, there's light. Okay. Let me call to Claudio and then uh, talk to Claudio. Give a number. We have about two weeks of making history. At the time that I took a job, yes, it was crazy. Um, today, I don't think it's crazy anymore. The man who took the helm of this adventure is Coach Fernando Clavijo. Born in Uruguay, Clavijo played for the United States in the 1994 World Cup. Being in soccer for 27 years, I haven't seen anything like this before. Um, and I have gone through some bad times myself. Charmed by the magical passion for the game in Haiti, he made his decision to take the job. Dad, you have to give credit to them. Um, I wish I can take credit for that, but I think that determination and motivation that they have is greater than anything else was going on in their life. Um, they go through a lot of obstacles every day. I mean, even here today, uh, we go to obstacles to try to, to make it to the next day. But they somehow find the motivation and the right environment to come and train and train well and, and they'll complain about it. Charmed by the magical passion for the game in Haiti, he made his decision to take the job. Well, expectation for me when I arrived in Haiti was really blank. I have no idea what to expect. Uh, I heard a lot of good things from, from Haitians and I had a lot of bad things from, uh, from all the people who probably had never been in Haiti. But when I would just walk into the airport, the first thing you see is people everywhere and really very disorganized people going in different directions. The common question was, are we going to qualify for 2006? That, that was the only concern that they have. They didn't care how or when, uh, what do we need to do about it. But everybody was concerned about just getting to the World Cup. But everybody have a smile. Everybody has something good to say about soccer. And that's what it called my attention. The people were great. Due to the upheaval in early 2004, the team was left with few resources and no infrastructure back home. So Clavijo proposed they stay focused on their training in Florida and away from their politically unstable homeland. For Clavijo, it has meant constant travel and financial sacrifice. I need to go and I need to pay for my ticket to be able to see Jamaica and to be able to see this player. I cannot wait. I'm sure he's aware of the sacrifices and if he wants to go ahead, me and the kids will support him. So I know that this is a good thing for his, um, for his career and it's a good and honorable thing that he's doing to right. help uh, the people of Haiti. So they have a dream and, and, and he's the, the one that is carrying a torch. Para ver si podíamos lograr este, este sueño ¿no? que había pasado en 74, así que creo que estamos bien, tenemos todo, tenemos todas las condiciones para, para poder lograr. Because of the chaos in Haiti, the Soccer Federation was allowed to play its qualifying matches in Miami, city with a vibrant and large Haitian community. Exiles with a hunger for a cause to unite them. 
The first qualifying match was against Turks and Caicos, islands just off the coast of Haiti, which fielded a team consisting mostly of amateurs and Sunday players. Haiti won both matches handily, progressing through to the next round under Coach Clavijo. They're a great story, uh, a team that is facing so many obstacles right now, basically in self-exile. They are going back after this match to uh, Haiti for about 10 days, but then they have to come back here, prepare for what is really an uphill struggle. They have to play Jamaica in the first round, and if they get past them, and that is certainly uh, already a long shot, they would be thrown into the mix. But this is a team that one of its players, uh, his house was burnt down, Peter Germain, uh, his, his house was burned down back home. The, the whole team suffered along with him. They are constantly on the cell phones, they're constantly watching CNN, and they're just hoping to survive. They don't have the money, although a local company here in Miami has chipped in and helped. They are getting some salary, but the coach, Clavia, he, he is getting nothing at this point. Preparing for the upcoming matches was a daily struggle, a double dose of pain on the field and hardship off of it. And the training sessions were also a dose of football bilingualism. Haiti faced the United States, the quarter finalists in the last World Cup and one of the regional powers in a friendly match that would test their progress. The Haitians dominated. And a goal by Alexander Boussicat a few minutes from the end put Haiti in the lead and drove the crowd to manic ecstasy. Money from appreciative Haitians rained down on Boussicat who picked up the bills while the referee attempted to resume play. But the Americans came back to tie the score in the last play, tempering the Haitian celebration. They could not yet savor the victory, but they can feel the progress and the rising tide of optimism. The 1-1 tie was a confidence booster for the Haitian players, who knew their families saw them for the first time in months, albeit on television. Oh, let's go. Je beaucoup travaillé pendant pendant le match et j'ai réussi à la fin à la, à la, à la fin à la, à la fin du match. On a on, on nous a pris par par, par, par l'autre équipe mais on a beaucoup travaillé, je suis complètement satisfait. Mais ce n'est pas un résultat juste selon toi ou oui Oui, c'est juste parce que on a on a joué contre l'équipe qui est qui est 10e à la classement général. Et j'espère je, je suis très satisfaite et le groupe est très satisfait aussi. Je suis énormément content parce que j'ai ma petite fille qui, qui, qui me regarde et ma femme aussi, toute ma famille est derrière moi. Je suis complètement satisfaite. The players returned to see their families for the first time in months and for the first look at their country since the uprising and the change in government. The destination is Port-au-Prince, but the next stop on the road to a dream would be a Caribbean showdown against Jamaica, the only other Caribbean nation to have ever qualified for a World Cup. The final stretch of the Haitian soccer odyssey took them back to Cocoa Beach, near the Kennedy Space Center, where they could at least get three meals a day in training facilities. A living Haitian soccer legend dropped in to watch the Magique boys. World Cup hero Emmanuel Sanon came to see and greet the heirs to his soccer legacy. Mano Sano, c'est le plus grand. Pour moi, c'est le plus grand. Pour le football haïtien, pour tout le peuple haïtien, c'est le plus grand. Sanon gained fame in the World Cup for scoring Haiti's goals in Germany in 1974. Italian goalie Dino Zoff had not allowed a goal in over two years. Yeah. 
As the amazing story of the Haitian national team spread, people started rallying around the underdogs who have so little but dignity and passion on their side. This is Haiti now. After we qualify, that one, that picture was taken. Our sport can do a lot for that country because it did it in the past. Sanon already did one important thing for Haiti. People were just like shocked. People just fell on It's like, oh my God. They didn't expect that. People told me I should have been there the, at the same time when I scored a goal, but it was impossible. I could not score in Germany and be in Haiti at the same time. The country just went wild. I mean, wild, wild, wild. It was, it was an amazing experience, you know? But we lost. I feel like there were some players who were a little bit afraid of who we were leading. Like, you're going somewhere and you see Mike Tyson in the street and you punch him in the face. You, you, after you punch him, you, now you're thinking what's going to happen to me. Now it's part of <laughs> Haitian history. Right. Happy! My first thing is said, were it not for Haiti, the United States would not be the way it is today. Because only because the Haitians defeated Napoleon were, were the uh, Americans able to buy Louisiana at bargain basement price. Whether Haiti returns to Germany in the World Cup depends on many factors, most of them beyond the team's direct control. But the true transformation is that Haitian boys, like Peter Germain, have touched many a people bit. with he their tried magic. tried to ask me something, but I don't understand. Okay, what Once pitied, they are now men worthy of being admired. <laughs>